O Lord, Master and Almighty God, the Father of our Lord, God and Saviour Jesus Christ, we thank you on every occasion and in every condition for all things. We have protected, assisted, preserved, accepted us, had compassion upon us, supported us and brought us to this hour. Therefore, we ask and appeal to your goodness, O lover of mankind, that you grant us to conclude this blessed day and all the days of our life in peace and in your fear, or envy, or temptation, or works of Satan, or intrigues of the wicked, rising up of enemies, sin and unseen, do cast away from us and from all your people and from this holy place. Grant us the endowment of benefactors, you have given us the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through the grace, mercy, and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory, honour, dominion, and worship are due to you, together with him in the life-giving, consubstantial Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot up my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blemish when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and the hidden part you'll make me to know wisdom. Purge with hisp and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness of the bones that you have broken, may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast away. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, should I wait until you get the right page so everyone can follow? Continue, continue. Yeah. So, Purge yourself and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and glance of the bones which you have broken, O Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew the past spirit within me. Do not cast away from you, your Holy Spirit from me. Do not read. Sorry? Oh, 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 and there. Sorry. Do not forget gifts, O God, the God of my salvation. Continue. Sorry, I want to bring it up. Well, do, oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I'll give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God <coughs> a broken, a contrite heart. These are gods you not despise. Do good in your good pleasure design. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. And there shall offer bulls on your altar. Alleluia. The prayer of the eleventh hour is offered to Christ, my King, my God, beseeching him to forgive us our sins from the sons of our teacher, David the prophet and king. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Do Psalm 117. I praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, Lord and all your peoples, for his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord, Alleluia. Psalm 120. In my distress, I cried to the Lord, and he heard me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given to you? What shall be done to you, you false tongue? Sharp arrows of the warrior with coals of the broom tree. Woe is me that I sojourn in Mesh, that I dwell among the tents of Kedar. My soul has dwelt too long with one who hates peace. I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. Alleluia. Pray the gospel together. Holy, 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 reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Now he rose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served her. Now, when the sun was setting, all those who had anyone sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, do not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Glory be to God for a Mormon. <laughs> Oh, 
If the righteous one is scarcely saved, where shall I, the sinner, be? Because of my human weakness, I cannot bear the burden and the heat of the day. But you, the merciful God, count me among those of the eleventh hour. In sin, my mother conceived and gave birth to me. I shall not do let day look up to heaven. But because you have great mercy and love to humanity, I call to you, saying, Lord, forgive me my sins and have mercy upon me. Look, Take me now, my Savior, into your fatherly embrace, because I've spent my life in pleasures and desires. My time is running out. Now I depend on your rich and infinite compassion. Do not disregard a humble heart who needs your mercy. I cry to you with reverence. I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am no longer fit to record your son. Treat me as one of your high workers. I practice evil with diligence and enthusiasm. With earnestness and keenness, I committed sin. For this, I deserve suffering and condemnation. Our Lady Virgin Mary, guide me to the means of repentance. To you I plead, through you I seek supplication. I call you for help lest I fail. Come to my rescue, my soul departs from my body. Defeat the conspiracies of the enemy. Shut the gates of hell lest they swallow my soul. O blameless pride of the true Lord. O Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Holy, holy, holy is a lot of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. God the Father Almighty, have mercy upon us. The Holy Trinity, have mercy upon us. O Lord God of hosts, be with us. We have no support in our tribulations and adversities but you. O God, absolve, remit, and forgive us our sins, which we have done willingly and unwillingly, and those which we committed knowingly and unknowingly, the hidden and the visible. O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name that is called upon us and according to your mercy and not to our sins. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and above. Thank you, compassionate Lord, for you granted us to pass this day in peace and brought us thankfully to the night and made us worthy of seeing your light until sunset. Accept this glorification we now offer you and save us from the temptations of the enemy and defeat all his traps set against us. In this coming night, give us peace without pain or anxiety or fatigue or illusion. So we pass through the night in peace and chastity and awake to praise you and pray to you at all times and everywhere. We glorify and praise your name, your, for your Father and the Holy Spirit forevermore. Amen. Have mercy upon us, O God, have mercy upon us. For you always worship glorified in heaven and on earth. O Christ, our good Lord, conscious and patience, it's mercy and compassion. Who loves the just and shows mercy to all sinners amongst whom I am the first. Who does not wish death for the sin of our repentance and life, calling us all to salvation, but comes forth coming rewards. O Lord, accept our praise of this hour and every hour. Ease our lives and guide us to act according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, set right our thoughts, cleanse our intentions, heal our sickness, forgive us our sin, and deliver us from every evil, grief, and distress. Surround us with your holy angels, that we be guided and guarded with them, to attain the unity of faith and knowledge, of imperceptible and infinite glory. For you are blessed forever. Amen. It's Father Labuna. Do you want to pray for us? Or... Um... Verena, uh, Verena, can you pray for us, please? Of course, of Three course. Yards. Yep. Okay, in the name of God, thank you, God, for bringing us here today. Please, God, allow us to learn to benefit from this. Please, God, allow allow your will to be taken over all of us and allow us to obey and obedient and learn. Amen. And hear us, Lord, and we pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, there will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil through Jesus Christ our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, for our glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Trying to admit people in and doing the whole slide thing. Is, yeah. <laughs> so. honest, I, got, I got stage fright and I completely <laughs> forgot the words. That's my bad. <laughs> All right. Sorry, right, Kira. Now I see why Bona Thomas is uh, getting the girls to lead the message and stuff. So <laughs> I see why. <laughs>
<laughs> I was hoping to hide as long as I could. Wait, I wouldn't have been. Use the secret, Ewuna. Sorry, Ewuna? You use the secret, Ewuna. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll do a quick hymn together. Put on with us here. This is actually nice and special. I forgot that we actually recorded this one in the last lockdown, but it's actually very nice. So follow on with us. To you, O Lord, among the gods, you are the true God, the performer of miracles. You revealed your power to the people, and you saved your people. We Well done, girls. Yeah, it's very so nice. nice. Well done. I actually had that recording. It's beautiful. Um, so I think before we start tonight, firstly, can everyone turn on their cameras? We have no one that has their cameras on. Everybody, please. I'm not, I'm not starting until I have everyone's camera on. <laughs> there we go. Um, before Buna starts, we have our pre-talk by our very own Verena. So take it away, Verena. Hi. <laughs> Okay. Well, like Kiri, like Bishoy said, if anyone could put their cameras on, it'd be appreciated. But um, I'll get straight into it, make it short and sweet. Um, I totally forgot I had a pre-talk today. Um, very unprepared, but lucky in pre sevens today with Kira, we went over the um, book of numbers and I, I learned some stuff in that I thought maybe, you know, it might inform you or make a difference for you. It's like I enjoyed it. So it's about um, someone suggested to me to talk about motivation. And when I was reading numbers, I really did take some motivation out of it. So I currently think uh, I'm not trying to make this like another COVID talk, but like I do think that we are going through tribulation of you know, COVID at the moment, and it's obviously impacting everyone differently with like families or relationships. Um, but I, when we we're reading numbers today, we went over um, the Israelites who, who, who wandered for 40 years. And I thought that was really interesting in the aspect for 40 years when it could have actually been 40 days. And I took away from that, why did, why was it 40 years and not 40 days? It was a test to them. And I was like, why, why would God be testing them? But the aspect was, when you're in that pressure and when you know it wasn't going well, what did they do? Did they they lean towards God or did they they just grumbled and oh my God, God, how much left or you know how long? Oh, why is it forty years? I think we could take out of that in our like our life. So for I put some COVID statistics. We've only been in COVID for sixty four days, which is only two months. It sounds a long like whilst, whilst we're in it, but realistically, two months isn't too bad if you think about forty years for those Israelites. Um, in the, in saying that, as in these two months are quite, you know, quite a blessing in what has everyone done in their lives. Um, in aspects, for example, people are trying to learn per, um, patience and, and there's so much different skills that we can be doing in these two months. Um, 
And another thing that we read in Numbers today that I really liked was when um, Moses sent out 12 spies and only two survived. The reason why these two survived was they had hope. And I think that was a really beautiful thing. If you don't have hope, you're not going to die. But like, where's your faith and hope in God? Where's your faith as in we trust in God if, if we're in COVID and we're in lockdown? It's going to pass. It's in, it's in God's will. We, we just take it as a goose, you know? And there is hope right now. Um, statistics for everyone. On Monday, there was 24.4% of um, vaccinated people. And today or yesterday, 266 So over like that five days, we had an increase by 2.2, which is nothing but it's development. You know, we, we're getting there. There's hope. Um, I said it was going to be short and sweet, so I'm just going to wrap it up by saying like, Obviously, I reckon everyone, you know, should obviously like this is just a reminder again, but like should be setting goals and and trying to see improvements and trying to see, you know, what what you can work on yourself. You know, if that's trying to read a book or develop your relationship with God, this is quite a primary time to be doing that. Um, For instance, I guess another good thing is that we've been, you know, when we're face to face, we weren't even, you know, doing so much stuff together. But now because of lockdown, a positive We've been doing so much Zooms and we're interacting with everyone. We're all checking up on our well-being. If it wasn't for lockdown, we wouldn't have been so close with each other. You know, we wouldn't have been learning more, I don't know, patience with each other, um, even with your families, you know. But hopefully, you know, with prayer and hope and trusting in God, it, it will end soon. It, it will. We just have to have faith, you know, work on yourself. And my last little verse that I really enjoyed and I thought maybe you might touch someone was by James. Um, James chapter 2, verse 3, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because, you know, the testing of your faith develops and perseveres. That's just something to leave you guys thinking, and maybe that might make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Verena. Very nice. Very good. Yes, big round of applause. Actually, that, that's um, a lot to do with what we're starting tonight. <clears throat> so we're starting tonight, guys a new series, okay? Um, and the series is called Are All Sins the Same? Okay, that's what we're really trying to discover. It's discovering more about sin, what it means to us, what we're, um, what we're meant to do with it, how do we stop it, all that stuff. So over the next three or four weeks, we're going to um, delve into that. So tonight we've got, obviously, Abuna Anthony. By the way, just while I'm speaking, everyone turn your cameras on because Abuna has said that he's not going to start the talk until everyone's cameras on. So everyone turn on your cameras. Um, I like that rule, Abuna. Thank you very much. You might implement that as a rule. Um, so tonight Abuna Anthony is uh, talking to us about the meaning of sin um, and exploring it in the Old and New Testaments um, and what it means to us. So make Abuna feel very welcome, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, to Buna, so Thank much. Um, okay, I don't want to look at myself. I don't know why I'm looking at my, looking at my gallery. Yeah. That's better. Okay. Um, uh, there's more people with the cameras off, so yalla, hurry up. Uh, Sarah, Marianne, Christine, Philip, yalla, come on. Um, you know what it feels like, guys? It feels like two people sitting at the front, and in front chairs, and everyone else sitting at the back. Okay, like I need to see your faces, young uh, Georgia. How are you, Georgia? Good to see you. Long time. Um, all right. So um, I wasn't told this is going to be a series, so I hope I'm not. Uh, what's it called? I haven't overlapped in uh, future talks. Um, so I'll share the screen with you. And while I do that, uh, let me tell you something. Um, you know, I had a North Korean, I was talking to my North Korean friend and he, uh, uh, I was asking him, how is it over there? And he said, can't complain. <laughs> Half of you didn't get it. Sorry. It's, all right. it's, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Can you see it? Can everyone see it? No way. Uh, sure, can you see it? Uh, is it is it shared? The screen's shared nice. Yeah, all working? Good. Yeah, we can see everything. All right. All right. So today we're gonna to talk about sin in the context of um, sin being the rejection of God, uh, 
God's love. Okay. Um, sin, and especially these days, it's not a very popular word. A lot of people don't like talking about sin because it's judgmental and it's, uh, and um, you know, I think over time people have lost, I'm talking about society outside, have lost the, 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 the meaning of sin. What, what, what does it mean to be right and what's, what's wrong and things like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's a really important topic to talk about, to, um, to find out exactly what sin is and to, 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 to know it for, uh, for myself. So sin is the rejection of, my, um, uh, of God's love. Um, in the first uh, chapters uh, of uh, the Bible, this is chapter two, we have the first story, all right, of the first sin um, about the serpent. Uh, and now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which God, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said to you, shall not, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we, we may eat of every fruit of the fruit of the garden, of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Okay. And then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not die for God knows that in the day you eat of this, uh, if and you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good from evil. All right. So the first problem here is, uh, and the first problem that we have here is that um, Eve did not, um, did not, did not, you know, the devil, what the devil was trying to do is um, get them to, to break God's commandment. Okay. And he directly, and he, he said, Clearly, like, if you eat from it, you shall not die. And what was the response of the serpent? You shall not die. Okay. What do you mean? How can a, God, a great God, and this is what we hear today, how can a good, loving God punish you? How can a good, loving God, um, you know, let you die? How can a good, and, and it made it made the Eve rethink her values, rethink the values that she, what she came up with. No, it's the values that was given to her by God. Okay. So the other thing is that we need to consider about in that story is that if you remember, the um, God, when he told them, when he told them, don't eat from this tree, okay? He didn't give them the reason. He said, just don't eat from this tree, okay? What do you think that is, okay? Um, and it, it, it would, have, uh, would have made a bit more sense to God tell them, you know, don't eat from this tree because, uh, you know, uh, it's fattening, you know? And I'm sure a lot of you would have stopped eating from that tree, all right? Would have obeyed God, yeah. Or don't eat from this tree because... Uh, humankind is gonna, you know, go down, go downhill if you guys uh, eat this tree, and that was would have been enough, you know, for them to, to understand and to appreciate and not to, not to eat from the tree. The reason why God didn't give them a reason for for, for that is because if there is a reason, then they're not obeying God for for who God is. Okay, they're obeying God because of the consequences of that. So if if I'm not uh, um, like I'm not going to eat it because God said it will make me this or make me fat or make me uh, lo lose the paradise or so on, but He told them, don't eat of it. That and, and that's it. He didn't He didn't tell them why they shouldn't eat from it. What's wrong with it or what's good with it to, to the, so that you don't eat from it? Okay. And like I said, this is this is exactly what the uh, um, serpent, the devil, was trying to. Um, play with with Eve. He was playing with. Come on, God doesn't. God loves you enough. As if God doesn't love you enough. He doesn't love you enough to, to tell you why. He doesn't love you enough to tell you. He was saying like he reevaluating his values. Why would you? Um, why would you? Uh, what's it called? Why would God hide something that's so good from you? It's so good. Why don't you just eat it? You're not gonna die. Okay. So, and he, uh, it, what, what's at stake here is that God wanted. Uh, Adam and Eve to uh, to um, to trust in him and love him enough to just do whatever I want, whatever he said, not because of anything else. Okay, I'm not going to eat from this tree because I love God, because God just made me 10 seconds ago. Okay, I didn't exist 10 seconds ago and he just made me and he gave me all these great things. He just told me this one thing not to do and I'm not going to do it because I love him. Okay, rather than uh, I'm not going to do it because if anything that's going to happen to me. Okay, do you get what I'm saying? Now, um, again, we sometimes this this a lot of the time plays into our minds. We always imagine um, God's commandments and sin to be like um, uh, like uh, we walking into a uh, candy store, all right? You know the lovely store at Windsor, all right? You walk in there, 
every kind of lollies. Okay, you haven't seen it in any other store, uh, and it's every every shape and flavor and, and everything else. And you walk through the aisles of, of that shop. Then at the end of the, at the end of just walking around, and God tells you, yeah, see all these lollies. You can't have any of them. Okay, and let's go. Okay. Sometimes that's what we think of God's commandments. Okay. That's how we perceive God's uh, intentions for us or God's uh, uh, commandments for us. Okay. Um, that's not, that's not obviously not the truth. Okay. Um, as, as we said, like God created all this world for, for Adam and Eve. Okay. And what? He told them not to eat from one, one tree. Not, you know, it's not, it wasn't, you know, like they had amazing, that God created all this amazing creation around them. And I just asked them one commandment just to show that. One, yani, just that bit of love to God, okay? Um, so basically, yani, God's gifts, basically, of, of the creation did not match that one thing that to do, okay? There is no match between the two. Whereas in our mind, it's the other way around, okay? In our mind, it's, ah, oh, look, man, like God, is, God doesn't want me to do anything fun, all right? All, everything that's fun, God says not to do. And God's commandment become what? Like just a burdensome yani, on on. Okay, where it's just not, it's not the case. It's the other way around. Um, okay, um, we'll go to the next one. So next slide. All right, so we're going to fast forward into the Old Testament. And this is the situation where um, Samuel, he's decided, uh, people came to Samuel, and by that time, they didn't have any kings. Okay, this is before Saul and David and so on. Uh, uh, God came to sorry the people of Israel came to Samuel and said look we want to we want a king okay at that time they were ruled by God himself so God will tell them what to do you go from here this is what you're going to do you go to the uh, the um, uh, to that land this is what you're going to conquer that land you're going to win that war you're going to do this you're going to do that and God directs them every step of the way he was their king okay they had a prophet and that prophet would, or a judge or a prophet and that judge or a prophet would um, communicate between them and God. Okay. One day they said, look, why, why don't we have a king? Okay. Again, uh, just again, to give you just a feedback Yanni, on this, this is a time when uh, uh, in history of Israel, Yanni, after God took them out of the Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, um, uh, stayed in the desert, uh, 40 years not even having to get like getting food from heaven all right manna and the quail from heaven having uh, a cloud uh, uh, in the morning and a pillar of light at night having a rock with water everywhere in the middle of the desert all right going into uh, the jordan crossing the jordan again crossing as if in dry land um winning every war again jericho you know i'm sure you know the story of jericho where even all the wars that they had to fight they were they just had to circle around the city and what? They didn't even have to raise the sword. They just, um, and everywhere was like that. Everywhere we go, a hailstorm will come and destroy the, the, the enemies and, and so on. Okay. So they didn't even have to fight. They had everything on a silver platter. Like God was doing everything for them. And their reaction to that was what? No, 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 no. But we want a king. Like, why can't we be like other nations? Why can't we be like, you know, all the nations that have a king and an army and a commander and, you know, we can go to. So they're, um, view was who cares about God? I, I, I want to look like everyone else, okay? That, and th th that was uh, what's the called? Uh, that was the downfall that they looked at other nations, for example, and they wanted to to follow them, okay? Um, it's like today, for example, uh, us, we want to do the sin not because it's good, because everyone's doing it or because it's, uh, it's so common out there. Why not? Why is God stopping me from doing this? I want to be like the other nations. I want to be like, um, uh, you know, whoever is doing it. Like, why, why is it wrong? Why is it wrong to have, uh, to have this or do this or do that? Okay. Um, uh, wh why is it wrong to, uh, what's it called? Um, why is it wrong to be like the other nations? So there is seen here, again, it's rejecting God's love because God has, has met them with so much love. Okay. In terms of, um, giving them all these things that I just mentioned, okay, and what they did, what did they say? They rejected like love. No, 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 no. You're boring. No, we want to be look like other guys. We don't want to look like. We don't want to be associated with you. Okay. Um, again, in in that case, of course, God only uh, gave them, uh, and God. That's what God exactly said said to him. They have rejected me. Okay, 
they, they haven't rejected you. They have rejected me. They're rejecting, directly rejecting me. Okay. Now this is, uh, this is like I said, like I was saying, it's it's like saying, I want to cheat like everyone else. Like everyone's cheating. Why can't I cheat? You know, uh, like everyone else is outside is like, uh, you know, they married by the, by their twenties. Why why are not married? Okay. Uh, I'm thirty something and I'm not married. Um, a lot of people think uh, I'm uh, what's it called. Yeah, everyone else is dating, and I'm not. I'm the only one that's not dating. You know, everyone has someone to call in the morning, someone to call at night. And uh, how come it's not me? Why is it wrong to do that? Why? Why is it just to do it for the for the sake of doing it, not for actually a relationship? Okay. So all this is just what this is deluding God's uh, God, rejecting God because I want to look like other people. I'm I'm rejecting what God has, the intentions that God has for me, the love that God has done for me because I want to look like other people that I see. Okay. From then on, that was the summary of the Old Testament, okay? The Old Testament was a series of the people have done evil, okay? So then the children of Israel did this evil in the sight, sight of the Lord and served Baal, and they forsook the Lord, God of the uh, God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Again, this uh, brought them out of the land of Egypt was a key uh, um, event that always was mentioned, okay? Um, and they followed other gods from among the gods of the people uh, who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord in anger, to anger. Okay. This is uh, what's it called? Like I said, this is a, uh, uh, this is a very common uh, uh, paragraph that you'll find again in, in all the books, in the book of Samuel, in the book of Judges, in the book of uh, Kings, first and second Kings. That's it. And what happens after, after a while? The Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of this, who uh, because of those who oppressed them and uh, and harassed them, so God was moved. Okay, Malish uh, Maradi, they they and they they get um, smashed by the, the enemies. And what happens? They they cry to God, and what does God do? Malish Malish, you are my people. Let's go, let's go. And he doesn't you know, like like he doesn't just to do it. Malish, يعني المرادي, يعني he feels he feels يعني يعني I'll let you go this time, but the next time, no. He's like, okay, you're all my people. All right, let's do this. I'll, I'll, I'll do everything for you. I'll win this war for you. I'll... God is so more excited about the, the yani, them returning than them actually returning. Okay? So that's, um, again, this is repeated again and again and again and again. And this uh, yani, has a lot to say about repeated sin. Okay? I'm sure this is going to come up in the, uh, in future yani, uh, future conversations. So I'll, uh, I'll not touch on it. But again, the, the the whole Old Testament is full of this repeated sins, okay, of them leaving God and what going after other gods, and after they repent, what happens? God takes them as uh, as they are. The, the, one of the the, the key the key uh, sentence here is that they provoked the Lord in anger, okay. And sometimes we read this like, come on, why, why would God get angry? Like it's it's yeah, I mean, God doesn't get angry, and that's not true. Of course, God get, gets angry. The only reason. I think someone, uh, Verena mentioned that just now, that like you guys are angry at each other. Now that it's COVID and you see each other more and you're angry at each other. Of course, you have to, ang Yanni, you don't get angry at someone you don't love. You only get angry at someone that you, you love, okay? And that's why uh, brothers and sisters are always at each other's throat, okay? You, I mean, your brother or your sister is more likely to tell you off, okay, than your friends, right? Or some random friends that you have from uni or whatever. Why? Because they love you and they care for you, not because of anything else. So anger here is not anger as in, uh, what's it called? Uh, anger as in like, uh, you know, crazy anger. But anger here in that context is out of love. Like, yes, I'm angry. When you do something wrong, I'm angry at you because you are, you should know better. You should know, you should not be at this place. You have a lot more potential. And that's why, that's where the, you know, anger from parents come. If you, some, if you see some random kid in the street uh, swearing or doing something wrong, you're not going to stop and tell them uh, what's it called, uh, tell them off because uh, they're not your kid. But if that was your kid or your little brother, of course you're going to tell him off. It doesn't matter in front of you. Of course you're going to tell him off. And that's very important, like I said, within church community, that when, is, when there is a problem, uh, sorry, when there is um, people are angry at each other at a church, okay, as in youth, that's awesome. That means this youth is actually, and it's, it's a very nice there's an awesome connection between them that they're too comfortable they're comfortable enough to do what 
to tell them off, to tell each other off. That's awesome. That's that's how you know that they're friends. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to see here a very interesting story. Uh, it's uh, I'm not sure uh, if if you have heard about it or not before. So I'll read it, then I'll explain what's going on. Okay. So he said to him, said to him as an Abraham. This is this what happened here is that God is making a covenant with Abraham. Covenant means a promise or a, a contract with with Abraham. Okay. This is an Old Testament. So he's making that contract with uh, Abraham, and this is what he said to, to, to for him to do. So he said to him, "Bring me a three-year-old heifer. A heifer is a uh, like a cow that has not been, that hasn't had given birth yet. Okay, so it's a young, it's a young cow. A three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to his uh, to him and cut them in two down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other." Okay, so he got all these animals, cut them in half, put the pieces in, uh, opposite each other. And so, and again, it sounds very strange, very weird. Okay, but this was at that time, that's how you make a contract. Okay, so if you have a contract about uh, mm, a big contract between two people, what happens is they get an animal and they cut it in half and they put two sides. And what happens? It, what happens is that they, after they put the two sides, the two people that, that, that um, have the contract, what do they do? They walk uh, in between the two halves where all the blood is. Okay, they walk between the two animals, the two halves of the animal. And once they walk past, what happens? This is a, 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 an imagery of what? An imagery of this is what happened to whoever breaks the covenant. Okay, so I'm going to walk and you're going to walk. And the person I'm making the contract with is going to walk. And if any of us break this covenant, what happens is, what happens to this animal happens to, to them. Okay? So that was that was the way, the normal way that people would do uh, covenants at that time. Okay? It's much more, uh, what's it called? Uh, it's much more vivid and much more interesting than just signing a piece of paper, isn't it? All right. So, and after that happened, after the, the, the whole, this whole thing happened, it says what? And it came to pass when the sun went down, and it was dark. Does that sound any familiar to anyone? Sun went down, it was dark, you know, Jesus on the cross, okay? And it was dark that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces, okay? So what happened here was that, okay, smoke, we know that God appeared as smoke where? God appeared smoke on, on, a, on the mountain, uh, Sinai, in. Um, uh, he spoke as as a, a, a smoke a to Moses as smoke. He um, he as fire. Where we know that he came as tongues of fire. We know that he uh, spoke to Moses in a burning bush as, as fire. So basically, the smoke and the fire is what God's presence. Okay. And what happened was that God, all right, this fire and smoke. What happened to it? It went through in between the two halves of these animals. Okay. Now, does it mention anything about Abraham walking? No. Why? The contract is between him. God is making a covenant between Adam, sorry, between him and Abraham. Okay? But what happens is only God walks through the, the middle. Why? Because God is saying to Abraham here, look, I'm going I'm to make this covenant with you. And even if you break it, I'll take it for you, please. Even if you, if I, I'm not going to break my covenant, I know I'm not going to break my covenant, but even if you break it, I, I'm responsible for it. Okay? So it's amazing, again, amazing imagery here that God's saying, what? Well, I'm responsible for you and I'm responsible for uh, your, uh, and I, I will carry your sin, okay? Your sin, I know you're weak. I know you're not, you're not able to, even if you die, that's not going to help your sin. The only way to do it is if I carry it for you, okay? Again, extreme love, like extreme love from God that even though they, they did absolutely, and human beings have done absolutely nothing but to stuff up, okay? God was what? Still showing love to humanity, okay? Through all these things and through all this stuff. All right. Um, fast forward to the New Testament, okay? And St. Paul here writes about, uh, about God, okay? Now, so basically the popular verse, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery, to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in a likeness of men and being 
found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So basically here, I want you to imagine um, you know, the contrast in, in this image, in this verse here. The, the contrast between Adam and Jesus. Okay, Adam, what did Adam do? He disobeyed, directly disobeyed God. Okay, what did Jesus do? Obeyed until what? The point of death. Okay, the, not just death, the death, the death of the cross. The worst kind of death. Okay. Um, what did Adam want to do? He wanted to be like God. Okay, that's why he they they broke the, the you know the eighth one the two to be like God. What did Jesus do? He emptied himself, even though he was equal to God. He emptied himself and became man. Okay, exact opposite. Okay, um, even though what's the call from Adam? He wanted to know God. Okay, Adam he did all this. Because he wanted to, uh, uh, he wanted to know good from evil. That's that's what he wanted to do. Uh, you know, the whole the, the the serpent. That's what the serpent told him. Okay. Whereas in uh, in 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 Jesus, he carried all this evil. Okay. He carried all this evil in him in himself. Okay. Again, very very strong um, you know, uh, imagery uh, uh, in contrast between Adam and what Adam did and what Jesus is doing on the cross. Um, so what is uh, our response to God's love? All right. Well, again, we hear St. Paul here. He says what? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now have lived, the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So now the whole issue, okay, is not has moved from, not moved, but has is not about fulfilling God's commandment. What is it about? Is about God who loved me, okay? Loved me and what? And gave himself for me, okay? This is the whole reason for uh, for, for St. Paul that he's doing all these crazy things around the world is the world is because God loved me. He loved me. Jesus loved me and he uh, he gave himself for me, okay? Again, it's it's a it's it's a it's a, a, a huge shift that my response to what God is doing for me in my life is to what uh, is is a result of what? Is a result of God's love. Okay. So, my our, our our response to everything that we do in life, all right, every anything that we do has to come in in this form, uh, in this in this yani shape. That it has to be a response to God's love. He love we love Him because He first loved us. All right. The whole reason I have yani, I love God is because He. Love me first, okay. Um, so it's yani, yani, the, the, what it looks like. What, what I mean by that is that what it looks like. Uh, sorry, um, there is a there is a, a, a saying by one of the um, um, okay, yes, one point here, but before we go, that um, we ourselves are unable to do that. And God knew that we are unable to do, it, okay? And that's why he did what with Abraham? He crossed for Abraham, okay? And until now, we are unable to do that. So what did he do? He says what? That Christopher, it is no longer I, all right? It's not me who can do this. It's not I who can have victory over sin, but it's who? Christ who lives in me, all right? So the, it, be, it became the, 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 the whole fight, the whole uh, argument has, been not, has nothing to do with me. It's Christ who... So the only way I can... Uh, fight sin is became is what Christ who lives in me. He did all this. He became the uh, the um, the um, the the perfect Adam, the perfect human being. Okay, so and beat sin so that I can I, can, I too can beat sin. Okay, there's a saying like I was saying by one of the desert fathers. Okay, and this is important. Why? Because our intention for obeying God has to be has to be very clear. Okay, so this is this is how it goes. It says that the um, the man who renounces the world from fear is like burning incense that begins with fragrance but ends in smoke. So if you're if you're following God because I'm I'm really worried about or renouncing the world meaning like renouncing sin. If I'm not doing sin, okay. Um, this is John Climacus, by the way. He's, he's steps uh, the 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 ladder of divine sin. Is in the first step. If I'm following God, if I'm not doing sin because 
um, a fear, a fear of judgment, a fear of getting caught, a fear of whatever. Okay, it's like smoke. Okay, it begins really, really nice, but what happens? Uh, uh, sorry, like burning incense. It smells nice at the end, but it just ends in smoke. Okay, it's it's you never finish. It's not a good reason you to finish um, your fight. Um, he who leaves the world through hope of reward is like a, uh, a millstone that always moves in the same way. Millstone is like, a, you know, the, the two two rocks on top of each other and you just turn it, okay? So it basically it's self-centered, meaning that he's self-serving, okay? Um, uh, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do sin because I want the reward, because I want to go to heaven, because I don't want to, um, you know, whatever reward that you put after that, okay? Because, so you're not following sin, but you're not, sorry, um, doing sin because of not doing sin, you're not doing sin because you are scared of or because you want a reward, okay? Now, the one reason why we should all be, uh, you know, not doing sin is what? But he who withdraws from the world out of love for God has obtained fire at the very outset. And like fire set to fuel, it soon kindles a large fire, a larger fire. So this is the only reason why we should be driven to, to get away from sin, to, to, not, to not to fall in sin, is because why? For, for our love for God. We, we love him because he first loved us. He, this is, remember, this is the first intention that God had for Adam at the beginning. Remember, if, you, if you remember, we said that God wanted him to obey him because of who he is, because of God, because he loves him, not because of anything that could come out of it, but because he, lo because he loves him. Do you see what I'm saying? So that hasn't changed. And Christ came and did that. Okay, that he did it, that he obeyed the Father all the way, all the way to the cross, and he did all that too on behalf of all humans. Okay. So just to make one point clear at the end, this is my last slide, is that the reason why we should reject sin is because of my love for God. How do I reject sin? Is by following his commandments. Like let's don't get the two confused. Okay. Sometimes we say that I reject sin by following his commandments, but the two, the two are different things. One is because my love for God, that drives everything. I reject sin. I want to be with God because I love him. And why do I love him? Because he loved me. Okay. Um, how do I reject sin? By following his commandments. Now, like I said, and his commandments are not, are not, uh, are not heavy. They're not, uh, they're not burdensome. And, th and this is something that, uh, what's it called? Um, that, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what any the biggest example of God's commandments not being burdensome? Uh, but first of all, you know we know that um, David in Psalm one nineteen he said, "What your commandments give me life." Okay, again we don't th when we think of commandments we don't think of life giving. Oh my God, how? But how does it give life? The best example of that is Christ Himself that He obeyed obeyed God all the way to the point of death, and when He obeyed to the point of death, what happened? He rose from the, God rose him from the dead. Do you see? So it gives life. Your obedience, all right, to God, even like God, and God has put any has done the extreme. Jesus has done the extreme that he obeyed God, not just to uh in not eating a fruit or not eating, not doing something. He, he he did the obedience all the way to the end, which is becoming man, becoming you know, despised by man, then dying, dying the worst death, death, death of the cross. And when he did all that, what happened? God raised him from the dead. So following God's commandment became what? Life. Not, not that uh, uh, restricting me. Um, what am I going to do? Like this is, this is, and why would I do God's command? It becomes, you, you look, you're looking for God's commandment to give you life. Because once I fulfill it, I what? God gives me life. I'm, I'm done. I don't think, I think this is the last. Yes, that's the last one. So I, um, I'm done now. If, you, if anyone has questions for Abuna Thomas, uh, Abuna Thomas is uh, more than happy to, to answer them. Yeah. We've got a couple of questions even though, in the chat. Even, even though he put his camera off, Yanni, but still we'll catch him, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the questions that came through Abuna in the chat was, um, how I think this is how do we generally build that love for God so that so that when we do something for Him we do it with the right intentions. Very good. The the, the only way to do it is to realize His love for you. Remember that verse that we saw. It says that 
we love him because he first loved us. Okay, so it's not that I have to love him. You know, they asked again. They asked one of the nuns. Okay, uh, you know, how do you love God? And you know, and she said, how can you not? Love, how can you not love God? God is like a teddy bear. Like you know, how can you love? I love it. You know, you know. That's why we don't speak to nuns, Yani. Um, but you know, that's that's how that's how we what's it called? That's how you should uh, uh, approach God. Like, how can you not love him? You know, he he, he realized his love for you. Realize how how much he's done for you, um, and he can only love him. You know, like I said, can you imagine Adam and Eve, and they are sitting there in the garden? They have anything and everything they can imagine. All this creation, all this sky, all these planets, all this, you know, uh, earth, everything. And all they want to do is what? That one tree. Okay. So, of course, they 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 took their focus from uh, the, the greatness of God, what has God given them, and what and they focused it in one thing that they they, they shouldn't have. Okay. So, for me, it's to, to, to focus on the amazing things that God has done in my life. And that's, you know, if you, you can spend your lifetime counting these things. And once you have them, really, like you can, you, your response can only thank you and I love you. But that's the only response you can have. Again, Yanni, I, 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 uh, I love the, what's it called? I don't know if you guys have watched The, um, the Chosen, okay? And it, it's really nice, uh, really, really nice. And especially the way they, um, what's it called? Uh, they're all, um, uh, say like, like uh, God has, like, you know, Jesus has uh, called them. It's really it, it, it really gives it like it's a no brainer. Once they find Jesus, once they find uh, Jesus, it's a no brainer. They follow God. It's a no. It's not any like again. Don't think oh yeah, this is just for months. No, it's it's they were married. Peter was married, but it, it really shows that they were real people like us. They're not uh, you know out there people that just wanted you know always wanted God and nothing but God. No, once they met, interacted with Christ. It was a no-brainer that they leave everything and follow him. So yes, once we realize that he loves us, then we're going to love him. Other than that, I don't think we uh, can. And we only when we realize that we love him, he loves us, that we can follow the commandments as well. Because following the commandments, if we just do it together for just following the commandments because the right thing to do, I think it's, like I said, it's like smoke. It just smoke will just, like the incense, and it just will go away. Or we're just going to be doing it for all the wrong reasons just going around So. There's another question, Abuna, um, and it's, sorry, I'm just bringing it up. Um, is following God's commandment alone what saves us? Where does God's grace come into that? Okay. Of course, I'm not, uh, in, uh, we're not saying fo fo following God's commandment as in, okay, this is what you're going to do to be saved. No, this is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, following God's commandment, as a response to God's love. It's a different, big difference. If you're just following God's commandment to be saved, like, remember the, the three options that we had? for the One for uh, the reward and the other one for, for uh, uh, fear, okay? So if it's for reward of salvation, then it's, it's not right. Do you, see me? Do you see what I'm saying? If you're living sin because of reward for salvation, then it's not right. It's not right either, okay? I'm doing this as a reaction, response to God's love for me that I just discovered in my life. Which again, which is not yeah, that it does not at all um, what's it called a post grace. Actually, it's a it's a, it's a it's a response to grace. That I feel God's love for me, which is God's grace on me in my life, His salvation, His um, incarnation, His everything that He has, the creation He has around me. And when I realize how loving God is, how graceful God is, how, how much grace God has uh, bestowed upon me, I what I cannot do nothing but follow whatever He says. Does it make sense? Um, another question, Abuna. Um, how can we move away from self-centered, egotistical relationships with God? Abuna Thomas. Abuna, it's a package, Abuna. It's a <laughs> um, Uh, how do we move from? Uh, can you can you read the question again? How can we move from an from a self centered egotistical relationship with God? Hmm. Um, again, I, I think the start the starting point is important. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Okay, um, because if I am doing something for the wrong reasons, it becomes what it's about me. I'm doing this. 
because I want that from God. Okay, so I'm fasting because I want this at the end of it. I'm, I am, uh, I am uh, obedient because I want this from God. I'm, I'm doing this because I want this. Okay, then if if this is your lifestyle, then it's God is not really the 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 the, you know, the, the person that you after. It's that, that thing. Do you get what I'm saying? God is just the means to get to that thing. Okay. Um, so if I'm if I'm saying uh, okay, um, I'm uh, I'm going to I'm going to fast and do all these things to pass this exam or to get this result or to get to that course, okay, and I it doesn't, okay, uh, and then I'm using God to get to that course. That course is the highest. Then God is just a means to get to that course. But when I'm saying the, the other worldview or the other correct view of God is. I am with God. God loves me. I love him very much. He gave me so much. Whether he does help me or not, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful to be, uh, to, to have this, his love in my, uh, in my heart. I'm grateful that he, what he's already given. Uh, do, do you see the difference? So it depends on how you start your relationship. It's really important how and the why in your relationship. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions for Abuna? And that can also, any that can also, sorry, Annie, that just to continue on that, if you have a relationship with a person just because, for example, you're dating because everyone else is dating and everyone else has someone and you're the only one that has no one, for example, then you're not really having a relationship with that person. We just, you just want to, any, a, a person to say good morning and good night to, and that's, that's all it is. That person, regardless of who that person is, any other qualities this person has or anything, this person is just there. Like I can give you an app that sends you messages in the morning, good morning, good night, and stuff like that, and you'll be fine with that. You know, you don't have to have that person uh, in your life. But so th that person becomes doesn't become the the the, the, you know, the purpose of your relationship becomes just a means, a means of me. When I go to church, everyone knows that I'm with this person. Okay, not that I'm with this person because of this person. So that come in, it, it, um, uh, it applies to our relationship with each other. I have a question, Abuna. Um, say we, we're doing the, we're trying to move away from sin for all the right intentions, for because we love God and we want to try and get closer with Him and have that true personal relationship with Him. But we've been doing a continuous sin for a very, very long time. Um, and it's almost got to a point of addiction. So say, for example, smoking or porn addiction or anything like that. I know that that's the, like, I mean, that's the extreme side of it, but how do we combat that? Like, is that a different style to just combating sin in general? Hmm. Um, I think I mean, it, it's very obvious in the Old Testament, okay, from the Old Testament, that what I, what I was saying is that the only solution to repeated sin is repeated repentance. Okay? Don't give up. I don't give up. And I can never have in my mind saying, oh, but, you know, God thinks I'm a joke. God thinks I'm this. Or, Khalas is giving up on me. I'm, I'm not worthy of his love. Uh, just, this is just becoming too much. Read the Old Testament. You haven't read the Old Testament. Okay? This Old Testament, okay, it's the people of Israel, okay, stuff up. The second God leaves them, he, they not leaves them. The, the second they get what they want, they just stuff up completely. And the second they um, repent to God, they what? Uh, or they they they, they, they stand in front of God with a broken heart. God just yeah, let's do it. Oh yes, I'll forgive you. And I'll give you this. And it, you know what it's like? It's like um, and this is and an, this imagery is in Old Testament as well. And it's not mine. It's actually in Old Testament where a, a guy is married to a woman. And this woman, all right, goes in harlotry all the time, okay? Uh, goes in prostitution all the time. And she comes and she says, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not going to do it again. And he, he accepts her, okay? And she does that again and comes again and he accepts her and goes again, comes again. And he, this is Hosea, by the way, okay? This is the imagery of the Old Testament and specifically in Hosea. The nice thing about it is, the ni very nice thing about it is that not only uh, after after a long time of her doing this, okay, this is a story in, in Jose. After the the, the 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 wife does this for a long time, um, she gets old, and her price in the market goes down. 
okay? So her price for prostitution only goes down. That actually is. So what happens is that God, you know, she has no one to, you know, no one to use. So what, what happens is that she goes to, um, what's it called? Um, she goes to God and, and he takes her, okay, like uh, Hosea, he takes her and he pays for her for the, 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 the what's it called? The, the price that they would pay for a young girl. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see the imagery, Annie? That God has forgotten everything that she's done, everything. The fact that she's old, the fact that she's, you know, and he was unfaithful to him the whole time, and it's, it, you know, it goes with the saying that says, you know, repentance makes um, adulterous into virgins. Okay, it, it's exactly the same. That God forgot completely everything that she did uh, with him. And, okay, here you go. Uh, I'm, I'm still yours. You, in my eyes, you still like a, you know. A, uh, you're still a young girl. You still, uh, I would want you as I would want uh, any young girl. It's, uh, see the image? It's, it's very beautiful, Yan. I was just reading a, a story recently, okay, um, from the Desert Fathers. It's really, really nice. And it says that a monk went and uh, he wanted to marry this woman, okay? So he went uh, and uh, talked to, the father, to her father. And he said, look, uh, I want to marry your daughter. And he said, okay, look, we worship idols. Uh, we'd like, no, he didn't say idols, Yanni. He said, worship gods. Okay, I'm going to ask my gods and come to you, come back to you. He said, all right. So he went and the devil told him, tell him that he's got to renounce three things. Okay, his uh, Christianity, his baptism, and his, uh, what's it called? And his monasticism. So he went back to the, to the guy and he said to, to the monk, and he said to him, um, uh, look, my, our gods told us that you have to renounce the, the, the three things. You have to, for, for me to marry, uh, to, to marry my daughter, you have to re renounce your Christianity, your baptism, and your monasticism. And he said, yes, I, I renounce my monasticism, my, my Christianity, my baptism. And as he was saying that, a, um, a, um, a dove flew from his mouth, okay? As if any, uh, any baptism went away or something. So a dove flew from his mouth. Then he said, okay, what now? He said, okay, let me ask my, uh, let me ask my gods again. So he went back and asked uh, his gods. And he said, the, God, uh, like the devil said to him, no, don't let him marry your daughter because I see God's grace inside him. And if he, if he marries your daughter, he will repent and God will accept him. Wow. Okay. So he went back and told the monk, look, the devil, uh, not the devil, like my gods tell me that you have the, still have the grace in you. And you, if you marry my daughter, one day you will, uh, what's it called, you repent and God will accept your uh, repentance. So I can't let you marry my daughter. And of course, can you imagine the monk who's standing there and is like, ah, oh, wow, God, God still has, he sees grace in me. What, who am I, what, have I, what have I done? Like, I don't have anything. I just rejected him completely. And he sees grace. And of course, he went and repented, went back to the desert and repented. It's amazing, Yanni. It's amazing how God, Yanni, acceptance to us. It surpasses completely surpasses anything that we can imagine, Yanni. So, Yanni, let's not God put God in in in, in something that uh, that's his that's he's not, Yanni. Very good answer, Abuna. Does anybody else have any other questions, guys? Very interesting topic. All right. Thank you, Abuna. Thank you so much for your time. We hope you've been well in the, in the monastery. Um, I think we're going to hang around for a photo after Mon does the announcements. Yani, usually yani, people yani, invite people that are experts at some topics. Yani. So thanks for inviting me about senior. Yani, talk of senior. You're saying <laughs> I'm an expert in senior. <laughs> expert in other company, Abuna. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thanks, Abuna. I really appreciate you coming. Thanks, Mon. Just before I do the announcements, I'll actually do the photos first and then I'll do the announcements. So can everyone turn on their cameras, please? I'll just wait for a couple of people. There are two pages, so please be patient with me. All right, sweet. The first page is Good. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, wait, it's not working. Give me a sec. 
Far out. Sorry, I'll do it again. One, two, three. All right, second page. Oh my God, Anthony, for this. Are you bold? <laughs> All right, one, two, three. All right, beautiful. Thanks, guys. All right, um, just a couple of announcements before we pray. Um, if you guys don't already know, we do Bible study on Wednesday nights and it starts at 7.30. Um, they will obviously continue online until lockdown is over. And um, we're currently studying the book of Daniel, so it'd be amazing to see this many people on a Wednesday night. Um, for those of you that are unaware, we do um, segments every day and like different sessions. Um, of different activities that the youth do together so it's just a nice time to get together do something fun together um, see each other check up on each other um, so if you're interested in sorry I just got a message oh, okay if you're interested um, in finding out what those segments are um, and you don't receive the messages let one of the servants know and we'll add you to our barbarians chat or um, we announce it on our Instagram as well so you can follow that if anyone has any segment suggestions, um, please let Sammy know. Um, we are looking for new ideas. We will literally take on any idea that you guys suggest. Uh, so if you have any ideas, please let us know. We're more than happy to try new things at all times. Um, we usually do two segments, one at 1 p.m. and one at 7 p.m. So if you're free any of those times, please feel free to join us. It'd be amazing to see as many people there. Um, just for now, currently, um, we are still hoping that camp is going to be in November. Um, so if you guys already haven't um, put, in that, put that on your calendar, it's the 19th to the 21st of November. God willing, lockdown will be gone by then and we can actually go on our camp. So please pray for that. Uh, also, if you guys don't know, we have started book club and it runs Monday nights. We're currently doing the book Whatever God by Father Anthony. Um, it's been amazing so far. Like every week we have had such good conversations and it's it's been really, really good. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and even though like even when you read the book and you think you have an understanding of it, someone else gives their opinions and their ideas and it's like you see it in a different light and it's it's really beautiful and it's one of my favorite segments that we do. So if you guys would like to join us, please do. Um, if you're worried that we've already started, don't be. It's such an easy read so you guys can just easily catch up. I think we're in chapter nine. If I'm wrong, please someone correct me. Um, we are up to chapter nine. So if you want to catch up, you can. It's, it's such an easy read. Um, and that happens Monday at eight o'clock, I think. Um, if and I'm you can wrong. find the book at through the Press website. <laughs> Sorry, Abuna? And you can find the book at St. the Press website. Ah, yes. There we go. And I think <laughs> we have a discount code as well. I oh, know, I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> Abuna was so kind to give us a discount code. I don't know if that still works, to be honest. It yeah, works, yes, fifty percent. The book from there. Thanks, Abuna. Um, so yes, yeah, support the monastery, buy the book, and join us for book club. Uh, but that's all. What the do you support? Sixty percent off. What do you mean support the monastery? It's fifty percent off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't use the discount code. Just buy it at full price. <laughs> there you go, Abuna. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy it at full price, guys. <laughs> um, but now that's all the announcements that I have. I don't know if there's anything else, Abuna Thomas. Awesome. Well, Abuna, please pray for us. Yeah, Abuna Thomas is done. Abi, we we'll continue the package, Abuna. Please, please. No, 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 no. It's not gonna work. <laughs> no, no, no. Not gonna work. <laughs> You choose one of the one of the youth to pray for us. What's that choose? What's that choose? Mary Loa. I am Father and Holy Spirit from God. Thank you, God, for um, bringing us together. Thank you for looking after us every day. Thank you for your great blessings. Thank you for this talk. 
Teach us, O oh Lord, to always love you as you first loved us. Amen. Through the intercession of St. Mary, Archangel Michael, St. John the Baptist, St. Mark, St. Shnuda, St. Barbara, St. Ophir, and St. Julian, and all your heavenly saints and angels, hear us, Lord, when we pray, thankfully saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. They will be done on earth as it is now. Give us day or day. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive trespasses against us. Lead us to deliver us through Jesus Christ. The kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Amen.